Yes, I see miracles. Yes, I see miracles. I see miracles happening for you. Woo, hello. I know it's late for most people. Um, Hello, hello, hello. I have such an awesome word that I want to give y'all. And I wasn't sure if God wanted me to give this word. So I've been sitting with this. I've been sitting on this. I would ex like share this message because I think everybody needs to hear this right now. God has just shown me something so awesome in the spirit. Hallelujah, God. I see miracles happen for us this season. I promise in this next season to come, you have to hear this word that God gave me. And I'm going to just start like, like it happened. So I want to ask the Holy Spirit to minister through me, through my understanding, through the revelation knowledge that God does give me through his word to help us in this time, in this tough time where we're going towards what God has for us. Who's excited? Are you excited? Because you know you made it through 2020, right? Like you got through it. So that means you can get through like anything, right? So this season, this next forward coming season, walk in faith, don't walk in fear. If we was going to be fearful of anything, it should have been 2020. It should have been Donald Trump being president. If you don't, I'm sorry, don't click off. It should have been anybody being president that you didn't understand. And um, without understanding, we really don't understand what God is doing. So we can't blame the situations. We have to trust God. Um, so God gives me this word in Luke eight. I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. Uh, it's pretty dope. So I'm sitting, I'm laying down last night and I feel this wave of fear coming over me. I, I'm not a fearful person. I'm actually leaving Wisconsin and I'm going back to California tomorrow. And I just had this wave of fear inside of my body. I could not release it. I could not get rid of it. It would not go anywhere. I could not pray it away. I got up, I started praying. I put on church music. I put on the word. I put on a sermon by Steve Furtick. I was using the forces and the power and the tools that God gave me because he said if I spoke to the fear, the fear would leave me. So I'm trusting God that that's true, but this fear will not go away. I laid down with anxiety for hours. I haven't had fear, anxiety in a long time, but I know this is because he needs you to know this. I couldn't do anything to get rid of this fear. So I called one of my sisters in Christ and I called her and I asked her to pray with me. So she says this monster prayer, you know, y'all I'm a prayer, but this girl, she's the strength. She's a, she's a super powerhouse in the spirit. She don't even know her own strength. She prays with me and she tells the anxiety to go away and don't come back instantly. I start to feel the anxiety lift because now what I understand is my spirit was in, with, in agreement that this anxiety needed to leave, but I needed a touch of agreement in this time. So she agreed with my agreement that my, my anxiety was going to go. I'm assuming that's how that happened. And it went away. And what she told it was not to come back. So what I said to her was, um, man, I hope it don't come back. She said, it won't come back. I told it not to come back. It's not coming back. I ain't had anxiety since, right? Wow. So I'm like, God, how come I couldn't do that? Like, I preach the word. Like, I speak. She don't even be speaking on Facebook. She don't talk to nobody. Like, how come she could tell my anxiety to leave me? But I couldn't tell my anxiety to leave me. I'm laying there and I'm thinking about the Apostle Paul when he says that there is a spirit that wages a war against his flesh. I'm like, all I was doing was thinking about Jesus. All I was doing was trying to get everything that I could to make the, make the fear go away. So how come... My mind was fixed on Jesus, but my flesh was still telling me that I should be fearful of something. He said, it's kind of like the Apostle Paul. He says, why do I do what I don't want to do? It's like my mind wants to go in the direction of Christ, but there's something working inside of me trying to overtake my mind. Well, how come she could get the, tell this, the, the fear to leave and I couldn't? He said, go to Luke 4. So we're going to go to Luke 4. And, um... So you got to understand that in Luke 4, the, the, we always, I've heard it preached so many ways. You know, the disciples were in the boat. Um, they're getting across. Jesus tells them they're going to go across the other side in the middle. There's a storm. They're scared of the storm. The, the boat's going to fall apart or they they think that they're going to die. And Jesus is sleeping in the boat and Jesus tells them, oh, hold on, you know, peace be still. Everything clears up. Then it's to ask them, why didn't they have faith? And then they're like, oh my gosh. So let me, let me read you the actual story. It says, in Luke 8, 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forward. But as they saw, sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and woke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. Like, we're going to die. 
he, then he arose and he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm. And he said unto them, where is your faith? And they being afraid wondered saying to one another, what manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water and they obey him. So when I read that, I've read that before. So God said, what do you notice about the passage? What was threatening them? I said, the storm. He said, look again. And I said, there's a storm, but in a storm, there is water. So he said, you guys are so focused on the storm, you miss the water. You're so focused on the storm that you miss the water. So it says that a storm is created with water and with wind. So it says that there was a great wind that came down that went into the water and it created this storm that threatened to kill them. Well, the wind, you have to go then to Ephesians 2.2. 2. When you go to Ephesians 2.2, 2, and this is how God had instructed me. It says in Ephesians 2.2 2, that wherein time passed, you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So God said it wasn't the water that was going to threaten them. It was the wind, the spirit that is attached to the wind or that actually is in control of the wind, which is the spirit of the air is Satan. We didn't rebuke the storm. We rebuked the spirit. We didn't rebuke the thing that we saw. We rebuked the thing that was coming against because as we know, Jesus is the water. Jesus is the living water. So the storm is a combination of what happens when Satan is allowed to enter Jesus. When the wind enters the water, it becomes a storm. When you allow your enemy to affect your walk in Christ, it becomes a problem. It becomes a storm. When you allow what's outside of Christ to come into Christ, it becomes a problem. So he said, you don't rebuke the storm. You rebuke the wind because Jesus is in the storm. Jesus is never not in the storm. He's always in the storm because he is the water. He started the storm. The enemy felt like he could penetrate the water and because Jesus came against the what was not of him he was left with himself he faced himself and he told the water which he was because he was the living water to come apart from the spirit so you rebuke the wind you rebuke Satan you rebuke the issue in the circumstance the disciples said well who is he that he can come against the wind and the waves well the wind is going to be the spirit and the waves are going to be the circumstance that happens when you allow Satan to enter the place that Christ is. So he says to me, you have to start to talk like Jesus did. He rebuked Satan. So you have to tell the spirit of Satan, the spirit of the enemy, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of discord, the spirit of animosity, the spirit of division, the spirit of anything that comes against Christ. You have to talk to that spirit and let that spirit know that in the beginning, there was already water. Jesus was the living water and God gave Jesus authority and dominion over everything, even the enemy in the beginning. So this wind can never overcome the water. The water has already been there. Jesus knew he had authority over over the water. So he says, you have to talk to what cannot overcome the spirit of Christ, which is going to be the spirit of the enemy, the spirit of Satan, which is who blew the wind. When Satan blows the wind, it starts to knock everything around. And so therefore it creates a circumstance. So not, Jesus didn't only talk to the, to the wind. He also talked to what it did to the water. So God said, you have to then, in order to release your fear of the enemy, talk to the circumstance that is in front of you. You have to stop being quiet. You have to stop allowing people to overcome you, allowing people to talk down to you, allowing yourself to be mistreated, allowing yourself to be in fear of something that is physical that can never out overcome Christ. He said, you don't just talk to the spirit and keep telling Satan, go away, Satan, go away, because it's not all Satan. The water is what is being troubled. The water that's in you, the gift that God gave you, the thing that's going to help you increase and multiply, it's messing with your 
wives, with your children. It's messing with your finances, with your business. The enemy has come in and it has disrupted the water. So we got to speak to the enemy, command the enemy to be back in his place, which is beneath us, behind us. We have authority and dominion over this. And then we have to speak to our circumstance. And we have to start to communicate with one another. We have to start communicating with people who are allowing us to feel the effects of their abuse or effects of their own fears or the effects of their um, leadership or whatever's not allowing us to move forward to the destination that Christ has for us. Whatever is threatening to stop us from getting to the other side. We have to talk to that thing. We can't ignore that thing. We can't ignore the waves. Jesus didn't ignore the fact. He didn't just say, Satan, go away. Now let's go ahead and go ahead and um, sail this ship over a bunch of waves. He then had to talk to the waves so that we could have the smooth in the, in the trip across. So if you're in a relationship where someone's coming against you, you don't just keep praying for the spirit of Satan to go away. You tell that person, listen, you cannot overcome who I am in Christ. You cannot be in this house, this relationship, this place, and interrupt my peace and my space. Because if you truly believe in Christ, then you know how Christ, Christ treats you. So you're going to be able to tell somebody, this is what you're doing to me. This is how you're making me feel. You're going to be able to go to your job and say, I deserve to be pay this much. I deserve to be this type of person or this is the position that I want. You're not going to fear anything physical in front of you because Christ is not just a par apart from the storm. He's a part of the storm. And being a part of the storm means you are in control of even your own storm through Christ by speaking to the wind, which is the spirit of the enemy, but then also speaking to your circumstance. Open your mouth. Talk to it and have faith to know that all things are going to work together for you because you are called to God and you are called according to the purpose of Jesus Christ. That because you are in him, you are justified. It is never your works that justify you. It is his love. It is his promise. It is his promise that said we're going to get to the other side. I didn't say we weren't, weren't going to get there if there was a storm. I'm Jesus. I don't lie. I tell the truth. I'm not going to say we're going to get there and wait, there might be a shark in the water, so we might not get there then. I said we're going to get it. It was an affirmative. It was a conclusion that was already made. We already. He already knew the story. He knew you was going to get there. You didn't know you were going to get there. He said you need to stop rebuking the storm because when you rebuke the storm, you're fighting with what's already fighting for you. The entire storm is not just Satan. The entire storm is a combination of what Jesus Christ is doing in your life and what Satan is trying to do to your promise. He's trying to knock it out the way. He's trying to get you off your game. He's trying to put people in your life to make you doubt yourself. He's doing the best that he can, but Jesus said, I overcame the spirit of the enemy even in the beginning. It has no authority and whatever the enemy touches can never come against what I have already called. So your circumstance will turn around when you start allowing yourself to speak to those things that are coming against the spirit of Christ in you, whether it be persons, places, or things. You have to start to tell your situation it is not going to overcome what God has already told you about your life. You will win. You will have the, the victory in the end of this. You are victorious. You are more than a conqueror. There is nothing that can stop you from receiving the promise of Christ once you have accepted that Jesus Christ is not this perfect. He is the, pro the promise within the problem. He's the promise in, in the problem. He's the problem that once we get rid of this wind... Once we get rid of this, once we rebuke this spirit of Satan, we have to then tell our promise it still belongs to us so that it can calm down. The last thing that God showed me was that Jesus was sleeping in the boat. And because Jesus is the living water, the water has to obey and follow Christ. So the water then became calm as Jesus was calm. He said, stop fighting your enemy. Stop fighting your storm. Relax. Because it was never you that was a part of the storm. You were always the water. You were always with the water. It's when you start identifying with the storm, when you start identifying with the enemy, when you start lashing back out. How are you any better than what's coming against you? When you start fighting back, you're not, you're not letting God do his job. God is the one that carries out the plan. God is the one that's fighting for you. Jesus is standing with you telling you, be still and let our daddy fight for us. Because the enemy can never overcome the light. The darkness has never overcome the light. The storm will never overcome the stillness of the water. Every storm has to pass, but it is up to you how long you allow that storm to stay in your presence. Jesus knows immediately if I am the son of God, who I say I am, if I am the child of Christ, who I say I am, if I've been covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, who died for my sins and through him, I am covered 
and given the same grace and mercy in this world that he afforded to us all. And I get his power through him. So I have to be still and trust that Jesus already rebuked your wind, but he was always in your storm. Don't rebuke the storm, rebuke the wind. Because when you rebuke the entire storm, you miss what Jesus was doing the whole time. Every storm should be looked at as a lesson. We learn how to move forward. We learn how to not allow that same enemy to affect our storm, our water again. We got to hold on to the water because the water is what multiplies, as it says in Genesis. It's the thing that gives life. It's the thing that increases you. Jesus is here to increase you, to push you forward, not to set you back. If it's setting you back, it's the wind in the storm. But you learn a lesson. I was telling uh, my sister. Oh, Jesus. Yes, God is here. Oh, Jesus. Y'all feel that spirit? I love it. Um, I was telling my sister. I was having a circumstance. Um, and she needed to hear this. And I, she was the first person I spoke this to. And I, I told her, don't look at the problem of what someone is doing. Look at the blessing that came out of that situation. What what was the blessing in your storm? Let's look at 2020 as a whole. Hey, that's my sister Crystal. That's the one I said she could pray the pants off of the she could pray the pants off Satan, man. I don't even know if Satan wears pants, but if he did, she'd pray them off. Um <laughs> so I tell my sister, don't focus on the problem, focus on the blessing. So some of us go through things and we're so focused on the storm that we miss the blessing. Let's use 2020. Yes, it was a crazy year. Oh my God, COVID-19. We had killer bees out here. We was all losing our jobs. Did anybody get stronger? Did anybody realize that they could do something that they never thought they could? Did anybody lose something that they never thought they'd be able to lose and not make it? Did you realize your growth in the process? Because not everything's a loss. If you stop focusing on the storm, you can recognize what the water was doing. When he takes it in the physical... He's doing it in the internal. When he takes it from the internal, he's blessing you in the physical. That's why people who have things, they're not necessarily as strong as they need to be. And people who don't have things are usually the strongest people outwardly. Because when he's taking it from you in the physical, he's teaching you how to live without it. Because if I know one thing in Christ, he tells us, forget what's behind and move forward. If we never learn how to forget what's behind, we can never move forward. If we never allow ourselves to let go, we can never receive. So you have to, in Christ, understand that there's going to be seasons and times of losses and things that you're going to have to work, work to let go of. and But it's all a learning lesson because every storm had Jesus in it. There was never a loss in the storm. All you did was lose faith for a moment. And then when you saw you still made it to the other side, aren't you glad you didn't stop before you got to the other side? Because of the fear of the wind. Satan is here to, to put fear in us. That's, that's his job. He stays on his job. I was scared and didn't even know why last night. And Jesus sent me someone. So some, we can't do this by ourselves. I couldn't pray it away by myself. I couldn't ask God. I couldn't put on a gospel song and, and have the celebrity pastor sit there with me. He gave us each other. He gave us one another. So when you're going through something, if you don't have somebody in Christ that you can call, you don't really have a friend. To be honest, I don't even know how my sister got on the phone. <laughs> I laid the phone on my chest and all of a sudden I heard the phone ringing. Jesus will make the call for you if you don't have nobody to call at three o'clock in the morning. And guess who was up? My sister. And she prayed with me because there's a power of agreement that has to happen. We have to have like mindedness. We have to have people that agree not only with our physical circumstance, but with our spiritual promise. So if I agree with your physical circumstance and your physical circumstance fails you, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get what you've been promised because true agreement is in the spirit. It's not in the world. We can't keep putting our faith in things and expect that when things leave, that meant God left. He said, if I take it from you, it's because I need it to. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Y'all didn't learn that from Job? I return it because the agreement has to be in the spirit of Christ, not in the world's understanding or in the world's situations and circumstances. Oh, we want this house. Boom. You put your whole agreement in this house. Then you don't get the house and you think God did something wrong. No, you put your faith in what you could see. 
Have faith in what you cannot see. See, the disciples couldn't see the other side because they were blinded by the storm, not realizing that even though Jesus was with them, he was also in the storm, protecting them on the other, to get to the other side. So God said in this season, stop rebuking the storm. Just rebuke the wind. Only rebuke and push away the thing that is causing the issue. We make Jesus our issue when we don't acknowledge the blessing that came from the storm. The disciples learned to trust God in that storm. The disciples learned that there is somebody greater than them that can now command even wind and water. Why? Because he already had authority over the spirit of the enemy, which was the wind. And he already was the living water. So he knew that he could not ever turn his back or lie on himself because he already gave that command. That all things work together, that we had authority and dominion. So if I tell myself and I come into agreement with my own water, then it's going to work out. Because what he had in the boat with him might have been a lack of faith, but he didn't have a lack of friendship. He didn't have a lack of trust. He didn't have a lack of love. You have to stop surrounding yourself with people that don't love you, that don't care for you, that don't understand you. And like my sister will say, it's because they don't know Christ. If they knew Christ, they'd know you. And so God said you have to not only speak to the spirit, but you have to speak to the situation and you have to be willing to let go of what comes against the spirit of Christ. If they come against you, they're coming against Christ if that's who you trust. And if you truly love Christ, it's going to be nothing to walk away from anything that doesn't accept him. Because when they rejected him the first time, he died. So we can't let people be out here trying to kill him again. We have to stand up for Christ in this season like he stands up for us. Like he stands in a boat facing a storm and tells the storm to be quiet. Leave us alone. I got this. He's got you. So I, oh, Jesus, thank you. I want y'all to start following my sister, Crystal. Um, If you, you, I've been telling her about her strength and her power for so long. And uh, I'm so glad that what God is doing in her life to allow herself to see herself. Um, you know, people can get lost in the fact that sometimes you're a strong person or you portray the word, you express the word of God. The people who give the word of God have gone through some of the most broken lives, some of the most hurting places. And so it is not that we are without feeling. We are just with so much faith that our faith overrides our fears. And so we're able to preach a little further than we are fearful. And... um. I was blessed with two sisters in the very beginning of my walk, um, Crystal being one of them, who have stood by me, who have prayed with me, who have lifted me when I couldn't lift myself, who have fought with me and left me alone and came back like God always did. Um, and when you have friends like that and people like that in your life, you learn to grow with each other. And I've had those friends in the physical. I'm my friend Rochelle right here. We've been friends since we were 12. Um, there's people like that in the physical. And then there are those who you meet once you walk into the spirit. And those are some of the most beautiful hearts that are so misunderstood. And so you get some, I'm telling y'all to follow Crystal because she is amazing with her words. Um, and I just want people to start to recognize and see what I've always seen in her. And I thank God for a friend like her who can see past me. Because I'm a lot, y'all. <laughs> Who can see past me and always see the Christ in me. So I thank you guys for watching. I want you guys to really start to look at this season as God is for you, not against you. If you feel like it's coming against you, it's not God. Sometimes things have to come against you to push you into a place that you wouldn't have gone if those things didn't come against you. But just like I said, Jesus is in that too. Um, learn that it's okay to fall. Righteous men fall. Um, learn that it's okay to ask and question God. I think as kids, we were grown up to be like, okay, sit down, shut up, don't say nothing. And so we fear that God is like that too. I haven't really known much until I started asking him why, how, okay, so who is this? Why does David matter? Um, when I start to ask questions, sometimes it takes time, but eventually God gives you the lesson that you need when you need it. I think it's a uh, first John two twenty six says, um, you don't need a man to teach you because you have an anointing that will teach you. Uh, through the spirit of God. And I have been blessed to never actually have a man to teach me because I found that to be true. I want people in this season to realize God didn't do the division with the church and throw, you know, do all those for no reason. Hey, Horace, how you doing? Um, Debony, <laughs> by the way. Um, and I want you to uh, know that God doesn't do anything for no reason. And he threw me all the way off. I forgot what I was saying. Anyway, trust God in this season. 
Know that he is for you, that he's going to give you uh, the promise that he has chosen for you. Um, learn to let go of your own ideas, your own ways, your own thoughts, because he says none of them are his. And sometimes we lead ourselves into our own bondages because we can't get rid of the ideas of the things that we want for us. And God has to consistently let those things break us until we are willing to let them go and let him have his way and i'm hard-headed i was the rebellion when, when the, i'm rebellious in my spirit um by nature and god knew that when he got me so he's very patient with me and um he allows me to go as far as except to die <laughs> so he might hurt you but it's gonna hurt you to help you and i i wouldn't change a step of this walk as hard as it's been and now that he has taught me how to rebuke my fear, because, oh, and the, the the answer to the question was, why could she do it and I couldn't? Because she knows her power and she believes in it. And I have a lack of faith in so many areas, even though I know the word I've learned this year, that maturity and wisdom are two different things. God, I'm being raised in the spirit, but God gives me words to give those that need them. I'm not the most mature person. So I'm still going through my own storms and battles with myself that are, and God's teaching me. So he gives me people who have come to that level to always make sure that their agreement, even if it's not in me, it's in him. And so she was able to rebuke that storm because she knows that she can. When you don't know your power, you can't utilize it or use it properly. So like he said, the way you get rid of your fear is you rebuke the wind, not the storm. The wind is Satan. The storm has a little bit of Jesus in it. Actually, it's authority. A little bit of Jesus is the whole thing. Um, and then you talk to your circumstance and you tell your circumstance the power that you have in Christ and how your circumstance, you tell your circumstance what it's going to be and it has to obey the command of Christ as long as it's according to the will of God. So I encourage you to just put your plans in his hands that you trust that he is not going to put you any through anything that he does not know that your faith in him can get you through. It's not more than we can bear. It's He will never put us more than our faith can, can trust him for. So uh, trust God and allow him to walk you into the promise that he does have for you. And I'm so grateful to be able to share this with y'all. And I pray you receive this and share this yeah, because we need to know our power. In Jesus' name, amen.